What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna see how we can create our own custom functions in Excel. Now you may be thinking there are so many functions in Excel, why on earth would I wanna create my own custom function? Well, sometimes, especially as you get more advanced in Excel, you start combining multiple functions together and you keep reusing this, maybe for a specific use case for a client or a customer, and you use this over and over again and you always have to combine those functions together in order to get the output that you're looking for. Well, you're gonna be able to save all of those combinations of functions into just one function. We're gonna be able to do that by using something called a lambda function. I'm going to show you exactly what that is, how to use it, and how it works. So without further ado, let's jump on my screen and get started. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at kind of the syntax of a Lambda function. Now, if you're familiar with Python and you've used Lambda functions in Python before, this should seem very, very familiar to you. But if you're not, uh, I'm going to break this down because once you actually take a look at it, it isn't super uh, confusing or extremely difficult by any means. And so let's take a look at this uh, diagram right here. So what we have is a function called lambda. Then we have two parameters. We have the X and the Y, and you can have as many as you'd like. And then you have a calculation. Now this X and Y, these parameters, and you can read it uh, right down here while I'm talking about it, but this is what you can use to pass in values as parameters. So over here, when we call this function, when we actually uh, declare it as a function, when we call this function, we'll call my lambda, then we're passing through one and three. The one becomes this X, the three becomes this Y. And then here's the actual calculation that's being performed. So it's taking X and Y, and it's just adding them together, and we get four as the output. And that is what we're able to do. Now, this is a super simple kind of version of this, and the calculation can get very complex. Uh, the lambda and the parameters are usually kind of the simpler part, and then the calculation can get quite advanced. Now, let's jump over to our Excel, and for this first example, we're gonna be using a discount, just a really simple, so we can see how the whole process works and how you actually write lambda functions, and then create your custom function. And then we'll kind of go into a different example, which I know I've used, and I think it's a, just a neat example. And so, the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is just the data. We have a name, age, purchase amount, and let's say this is their total purchase amount, but we want to apply a discount to this based off of their age. And this is something that we do all the time, and so we want to save this so that we can reuse it over and over and over again. So the formula for something like this is we could say equal, we can say if, and then we'll do our parentheses. Now we have our logical test, so we can say if, the age, and we'll just do this column, and we'll say is greater than 64, then if that is true, we're gonna take the purchase amount and we're gonna multiply it times, let's say 0.75. That means we're giving them a 25% discount, but if it is false, which means if that logical test is not true, maybe they're uh, 63 or 25, if they're 64 years or younger, then we'll do a comma and we'll say D2, and we'll still give them a discount, we're not bad people, uh, but we'll just give them a smaller discount. So instead of a 25% discount, we're gonna multiply it times 0.9, which is a 10% discount. So we're gonna hit enter, and whoops, let's drag this all the way down. So now we've applied this all the way down. So if they're so if they're 65 and up, they're getting a 25% discount. If not, they're still getting a 10% discount, which I think is very fair. And so these are our final numbers right here. So what we have up here in our formula, or if you want to double click into here, this is something that in the programming world you'd call hard coded, which means that if you ever want to change anything in here, you need to come in here and manually change the C2, D2, and D2 in order to use it in the future. But with a Lambda function, we make it more dynamic, which means it changes as you pass through different things. So as we were talking about before with those parameters, as we pass through new values into those parameters, we don't have to go and manually change all of this. We just have to uh, specify the parameters really quickly. And so it saves a lot of time. So let's see how we can write this Lambda function, and then we're gonna create it as a custom function. So what we can do is we're gonna say, uh, we're actually gonna copy all of this real quick, or at least let's copy this if part. So we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say equals, and then we're gonna say lambda. 
it says creates a function value which can be called within formulas. So we're going to open up a parenthesis. Here is our parameter or calculation. Now we only have two parameters. We have the age and we have the purchase amount. So we're going to call this uh, age and then we'll say amount. We'll do it just like this. And then we have a comma and we can either put in a parameter or calculation. So if we wanted to keep putting in more parameters, we can, but now we're going to add in our calculation. So we're going to paste in our calculation. But this C2 and D2 and D2, these are references to the age and the purchase amount. So this age right here is this C2. So we're going to go over to C2. We're going to put in age. And then for the amount, that's that D2. So now we're going to put it right here and put it right here. Now, right at the bottom, at the very end, we need to close our parentheses. And so What's going to happen if we hit enter? It's not going to work. Uh, and this is because this Lambda function requires us to, and let me pull it up over here. This requires us to pass through arguments. Right now it's just age and amount. There's no actual numbers uh, for this calculation to work right here. So we have to pass through these numbers. Now just within the Lambda, we can pass through it at the very end. We're going to pass through this, comma, this. We're going to close the parentheses and we'll hit enter and there we go so now we can go all the way down with this and these should be the exact same numbers now this seems like a lot of work because right here it was pretty simple and then right next to it we have this really long lambda function so why would we want to do that well we're about to save us a lot of time because we're going to copy this entire lambda function right here and we're going to go over to uh, right here, which is name manager. So you're going to go to the formulas. We're going to come over to the name manager. This name manager is going to allow us to create a custom function. So let's go ahead and click on this. We're going to go to new and we're going to name this. We're going to call this uh, the 10. Actually, we're going to call this the discount underscore applied uh, function. Now in this refers to, we need to get rid of this and we need to paste in our function, which is our Lambda function. And in our Lambda function, we have everything we need. So now that discount apply, we're going to actually create this. So now this is an actual function and there is uh, our formula that we created. Now we applied this to all of our workbooks. So it's gonna save it in there. We'll close this out. And now all we have to do to apply that discount, instead of writing all this out, and instead of uh, you know creating this whole lambda, all we have to do is we say equal to, and we're gonna say discount, and there it is right here. So now we can double click on this, and we have to pass through the age and the amount. So now we're just gonna do here, C2, comma, D2. And that's it. And now we can apply that all the way down. And so it's pretty awesome because if you are using this a lot, if you're going to be using this discount applied a ton, then you don't have to rewrite this calculation every single time. You can standardize it, you can create it with this Lambda function, and then you can save it. And that's really, really powerful. So now let's go over to our next example. And over here we have a bunch of data. We just have uh, some SAT prep products. And these are uh, some SAT companies selling, uh, you know, middle school books, high school books, ACE the SAT boot camp, test booklets, and all sorts of things. And then we have uh, January through December's data. Now, this is something that I've actually, you know, similar use case. This is something that I've actually used a Lambda function for because I used to get this uh, data from several clients where I needed to organize it based off of some other data. So I wanted to say, okay, I have this January data. In January, let's organize the products from the ones that sold the most to the least. And if you're going to do this manually, you know, you have to come in here and I want to do this for each month, right? It's not just one month, but I want to do this for each month. So I have to come in here. I'm going to choose data. I'm going to filter. I'm going to uh, go smallest to largest, or sorry, largest to smallest. And then I need to copy this and that'll be for January. Then I need to come over here and I need to do largest to smallest. I need to copy this and that's going to be for February and so on and so forth. And so you can see this is a very manual task. I'm just doing control Z to get back. This is a very manual task and this can be, let me get rid of the filters there too. Um, this can be a very manual task 
And so what you can do is you can do a function that does this for you, and it's going to speed up your process immensely. So let's see how we can do this. We're going to say equal to, and we'll just create the formula uh, just like this. We'll create just the formula first, and then we'll save it as a function. Now we can do this, and we're going to create the whole lambda formula first, and then we'll save it uh, so that we can just keep reusing it for this entire month. And by the time it takes us to create the formula and the function, we basically would have had to do that all manually. And now we can use this function forever and we can just keep using it. It'll save us a lot of time in the long run. So we're going to say equal to, and you guessed it, we're going to say Lambda. And what we need to do is we need to take in two different things. We need to take in uh, the unit sold. So that's in January. And then we also need to take in this right here, which is our product. Now, we don't want to actually take those in. These are cell references and ranges. We want to just specify the parameters. So that's going to be sales and products. Now, we need to actually create our calculation. And so this is the calculation we could have just created uh, by itself if we wanted to. We want to save this, right? We want to save this. So we're going to do sort. We're going to do sort by. Now, sort by has uh, several things that we need to pass in. We have an array, we have a by array, and the sort order. So what we're going to be actually sorting is this right here. So that's going to be our B2 to B7. That's going to be our products. So we need to specify the products. And then our by. What are we sorting these, uh, these products by? We're doing it by how many were sold. So that's going to be this right here. That's our sales. So we need to specify the sales. Now we have to specify whether it's ascending or descending. So we want from highest to lowest. So we're going to specify negative one, and we're going to close this with two parentheses at the end. Now, again, if we run this, it's not going to work, but if we pass through at the end, we're going to come in here. We're going to pass through the sales. It's going to be right here. And then we're going to pass through this right here, which is our products. And so when we run this, it's going to organize all these for us. So the biggest one was SAT prep, SAT prep high school book, and that's going to be this one right here at 439. The next one should be ACE, the SAT boot camp, and then it should be SAT test booklet at 285, then the middle school prep, and then tutoring, and then college admission. And so it did that all for us. And we're going to save this as a custom function. So we're going to copy this whole thing. We're going to uh, click escape so we can get out of there. We're going to go back to our formulas and click name manager. We're going to go to new. And for this one, we're going to say order by sales. And then right down here, we're going to get rid of this refers to, and we're going to paste in our custom Lambda function. So now we have that one saved. Let's come over here and let's actually, let's move this over because now I want to bring this right here. We're going to say equal to, and this is going to be um, order by sales, and we have to pass through the sales and the products. So we just choose the sales, we choose our product, we close it, and we're good to go. Now, if we want to apply this to all of these, let's say we want to get um, February through December, there is one small thing that we have to do is we have to come in here and say that this is locked because or we have to anchor it. If we bring this over, it's not going to work because now this is referencing D2 and D7 and C2 and C7. So these are the wrong ones. So what we have to do is we have to anchor this. So we can come up here and we'll hit F4. So now this C2 and C7 will move over with every time as we pass it over, where this, which is the products, which is staying stationary, is going to stay locked or anchored in place. So now we're just going to drag this all the way over. And let me go one more. And now we have all of these organized for us very, very quickly. And so that actually saves us a lot of time having to manually do this or having to rewrite that calculation using the uh, order by, which is right here or the sort by every single time. So it speeds it up a lot and we're able to create these custom functions that are now saved and we can use whenever we want. And so if I'm in my job and I'm doing a ton of manual work or writing a lot of similar formulas all the time, 
well then I can just create this custom function and I can reuse it. And it saves a lot of time being able to do that. Now, the last thing that I wanna mention is this comment right over here. When you select a function, you can usually get some type of quick example of what it is or quick uh, definition of what it is. And we can do that too. This is the discount applied. So we can write applies 25% discount for seniors say 65 plus and 10% for everyone else. There we go. Let's click OK. And let's just say we were going to use that. So we're going to say uh, discount applied. If we hover over this, we get this message right here. Applies 25% discount for seniors. And you can add anything you want in there, right? If you want to explain what the parameters are and what they do, you can put anything in there. And so that can be really helpful as well. And so that is how we can create these custom functions that I think are extremely, extremely helpful, especially when you're doing a lot of repetitive type of formulas and functions. You don't have to just rely on it and remember all of this code. You can make it more dynamic using these Lambda functions and saving them as a function that you can reuse over and over. So I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you now know how to create your own custom functions. If you have not, be sure to check out analystbuilder.com where you can take my full Excel for data analytics course. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next one.